Hi, you guys. It's Acrylic Painting Monday, and today we're going to be taking our acrylic paints and our canvas, and we're going to make our imagination take us to the Caribbean, where we're going to be painting some fabulously beautiful pink and orange flamingos on a fence. How cool is that? Yeah? I think you're going to be surprised at how uh, fun this will be and how this will turn into just really neat, colorful extravaganza of... <laughs> flamingos now I actually haven't painted it yet so this is all in my imagination I've got I've done a bunch of sketches of how I wanted to do and I painted a very small little picture of flamingos uh, some time ago but I've since evolved this painting and decided that this is how I, I was so happy with our our rooster on a fence and our cow on a fence uh, tutorials that we've done on YouTube I thought this was fun and if you particularly if you happen to live in some of our tropical ports like Florida or Australia, or, uh, the Caribbean or, uh, you or know, Texas, Texas, anywhere <laughs> where you're, you might, you know, want, uh, you know, down at the, you know, kind of, this is sort of a beach house painting is what I'm hoping to do. Right. It's just as what, you know, and if you, everybody, you know, I mean, if you live in new England, maybe it wouldn't go, but it might be fun to paint it. It might be fun to just do a bathroom up in colors like this put this as your your main focal point in there because who doesn't want to go to the caribbean even if it's snowing outside so let's let's try painting this and see what happens let's slide on down all right now we're doing this a little larger than normal because i needed some room for the birds this is a little 9 by 12 canvas and it's just painted sort of a thalo green and turquoise you know thalo blue thalo green and white okay and what I want to do, that's the under color for my fence. Basically left. Basically, over. what I want to do now is sort of, this is, a, like I say, 9 by 12. So let's take a, a, a some chalk and just, this little chalk pencil. Here's, here's uh, let's, let's say, let's go every, uh, let's make our fence, what do you think, about every three inches? That's a big fence. Three, six, nine, twelve. That's not bad, right? Four slats. Yeah, four slats. I don't know if we need them anymore. I guess we could do a, we could do two. Well, how how, how many's on the? Uh... Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So you want to have probably a. I wanted to do five. Here, math. Here, old math wizard. How would we do five? Well, you're gonna have to. Five will go into twelve. What? Um, three inches. What are three? What'd you just do? What was that? Two. We did three. Two and a half is probably so maybe we want. want to do two and a half. Let's just do two and a half, right? See what happens, right? Gee, I would have done two and a half, five, seven and a half, and done it that way. How would you have done it? <laughs> now, what's what? the next? Call one? me crazy. That's five. Five and a half? No, five. Five, yeah. <laughs> then what? Seven and a half. Seven and a half, and then what? Nine. Nine. No. That'd be ten. And ten. Oh gosh, isn't it great to have jog along? I <laughs> have to get out the calculator yeah, and do the math that's for right. that. That's, that's perfect. All right, there you go. So, all right, so now we're going to take a little T square here and um, draw our line. So, remember, when you have a T square, you've got it, you're assuming that this canvas is square and you're hooking it up on that. This is kind of important. So, if you want it to be straight, okay, and stop. Okay. Like that, right? So, straight. Yeah. Now, we're just going to do a line like that. What to do? John squares. This is a good. Well, it's close enough. I mean, it's All a right. fence. It's, it's, it's a fence. Well, it wasn't so perfect, but it's kind well, of... Well, you didn't want it centered. No. No. All right. A little tension. A little tension. Okay, that's... that's. I thought it was going to be perfectly even, didn't you, when it gave us all those numbers? It's all right. You know, Did you want it even? I mean, we can make it even. No, no, it's fine. It's I fine. I can't see you doing two and two and two and three eighths, though. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was lucky to get two and a half out of you. <laughs> Let's not push our luck. Yes, and yes. Hey, why I'm um, I want to take a um, a uh, uh, a moment. A, a, no, I want to oh. take. I want to put the lines in and then dry them. While we're while I'm doing that, let's um, I tell you what. Let's do. Let's let's take uh, some burnt umber and a little um, maybe a little purple. And a little bit of but say burnt umber, a little bit of purple. That could be like dazzling purple, could be a little blue. We want something a little darker. Okay. A little bit of burnt umber here. And let's just come on down like this and uh, put our, just 
paint the no, no, lines. No, but this in. is a wooden fence. It's not perfect. Yeah, so this is why I'm doing it like this, kind of a little bit at a time here, like this. It's a weathered board. Yeah. Or two. So we're going to do that. So who's here, John? We're going to say hi to our moderators. Now, the problem is we don't know who's here. Because of course we know who's here. Because, our moderators are always here. Because, but this is a premiere, right? Yes, it is a premiere. So it's a premiere, so we're not real sure who's well, here. Well, we hope that they're there. So if they, if they are here, hi. <laughs> and if you're not I, here, why aren't you? you like that. <laughs> hi, if you're here. We're not here either, but we're in the hopefully in the live chat. So, hey, Ginger. Hi, John. Welcome, right? Now, I will be typing answers in the live chat. I always like when we do that, okay? She's going to do it in capital letters, and she's not yelling. Yeah, I just don't and spell well. Not, you know, don't, don't correct her on her spelling. Just go with what she said. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, dry this real quick. Now, the key to this is to get this fence to look very old. We want to have sort of, and I want it sort of tropical. So I want to take... Um, Let's see, I need a small palette knife here. Well, I can use one of these. It's not small, but I, I'm going to take some white paint. That's not very small. And I'm going to take some yellow, well, a little yellow oxide maybe, and a little raw umber. Okay? Hmm. And I'm going to just squish this down like that. Now, that's, that's a pretty color, but it isn't quite... Not what you're looking is for. That, so I'm going to put a little dab of purple in that. And why is that? Because purple grays yellow. See? So I'm just going to squish that down like this. Now that's a better beige. You see, it's, 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 it's kind of, it's a very off kind of beige. Now let's put, I don't think that's yellow oxide. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> It might be yellow oxide, but it's been a while since I put it out. So let's let's try another. Let's see. I think that's closer to yellow oxide. Let's try that one. And let's try a little bit of yellow oxide again. And then we're going to try some purple. There. Okay, that's it. There we go. That's it. So it's sort of this kind of a combination of this color, which is really a beige, and then the lighter color. These two colors, sort of, you kind of light and the dark tan here is what we're looking for. So I have two, two, two colors here, basically. See that? Now I can do it this flat because it's on a stay wet palette. Now what I want to do is I want to um, have a, this a sort of dry brushing technique. So there's no water on this brush whatsoever. And I'm going to just put it, just kind of put it like that. And I want to take the brush and hold it very flat and drag it down over this. Um, in fact, you really kind of want to be able to wipe it off on like a paper towel or something when you're doing this. You can always add more paint. It's hard to get it back. So let's say I'm going to say I'm going to come, well, right here next to this, I will just do that. But I want to drag down the um the brush so that some of this blue is showing through okay when i come up to the edge there you go all right now here's a little darker color i might put some of that over but i might have to do that in two steps okay but here we go for now all right so here's here we go now let's just do this again we're just going to drag this down here like that Put it on, wipe it off, and uh, come right, use the edge of this angle brush, come right on up to here. Um, there we go. Let's see, what happened to you? You stay over there, mind your own business, you crazy palette knife, you. Here we go. Now I want to I wanna get close to this edge, so for me, it's easier to go down then pull up. So I want to come down here like this. Pull that this way. All right, see what I just did. So just, you know, if you're having trouble with something, just move your canvas around a little bit. 
Um, don't be afraid to do that. Hey, now, if you're on an easel, how would you do that? Um, it's, not, it's just not as easel. It's okay. sure it is, but you just, it's going to make your arm tired. But yes, you can do it on an easel. Hmm. For years, that's all I ever painted on was easel. So I want these, I want these lines very thin. These little cracks in the board. Okay. So, um, I feel the spaces between the yeah, those little spaces, yeah, the spaces between the boards. I want very, very thin. As long as I'm here, I'll do this side. Okay. And um, turn it this way. So you just barely want to see these. Okay. Yes and yes. See how we're kind of aging this board a little bit. Now let's just bring some of this color down. Okay, let's take my wipey rag and put it up here where you can kind of see it. Like that. Can you see that up there? No. You can't well, you, I, they can't be seen different angles. Okay. You're fine. I bounce them back and forth. All right. So here we go. I'm just going to take it and just kind of wipe off some of the paint up and down here like this. Again, I want some of this blue to show through. I'm going to age this uh, wood. Um, all the way up and down. Sometimes you're going to use a little bit more paint than other times. So it's just, um, like I say, you can always add more, but you see how we're, we're aging this. There we go. Looking good. Do the last one. Now, if you were doing just a regular fence, say in like in a a neighborhood or something, you wouldn't have the background blue. You'd probably have a dark brown. You'd have a dark brown background. But what because we're trying to convey something a little more tropical, we're doing this one. So much paint on the brush, you can get a lot out. Like this. Oh, there's so much paint on there. So it's just one of the ways you can do it. Now I want to add a couple more layers of something to that. So I think I'm going to take a little raw umber and put it in here. And uh, maybe just come down over this just one more time with something. You mean you got one more tone? Yeah, one more tone of color. Another layer of depth? Yeah, that's it. You know what I mean? It's just, it's not put in at the same time, but it's, I'm going to put it in here maybe over the, raw umber is a transparent brown as opposed to burnt umber. If you didn't have raw umber, I guess you could use burnt umber, but you won't get quite the same effect. Raw umber is one of those colors that you don't use that often, but, um, but you can. And uh, and what you're what you're going for is this. You're just trying to soften everything, See, even over this this dark these dark wooden lines, kind of softening them a little bit. Yeah, it's one good looking board. Yeah, it's nice, I right? I almost hate to paint anything on top of it. I I'm telling you, it's a nice board, right? And it's just if you get now look, don't panic if you get got too much, just put a little of the other back now. 
one thing we can do with that is uh, for sure is we can dry it and then add another layer. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to, maybe this board's been painted a couple of times. So here's this blue color. I'm going to mix that in. Let's see, I don't know why this palette knife keeps falling. It's because the table is tilted. Here we go. Here's this blue color. It's not quite, um, not quite the other blue. Let's see. Let's try a little bit more. Let's try a little darker blue here. Ooh, like that. There you go. Just there we go. Just a little bit of this blue color on this board. We've got a tropical board here. I might do a little a great bit more. Board. Great board, right? Well, I thank everybody for joining us tonight on painting this board. Next <laughs> week, we'll have an exciting conclusion. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly so, right? Yeah. Well, I think you've captured the the essence of the Jamaican islands. Yeah, see, I, I wanted a Jamaican-looking board, right? And mm. and that's that's fun. And and this is a little burnt umber now. You can see how much darker it is. But even if we come up here and darken some of the corners in a couple of places, or sometimes what happens if you ever notice with wood, if it's splashing, the dirt splashing up, it might be a little darker here on the bottom. There we go, too much paint. Let's just pull up a little brown here on the bottom. All right, so there's, okay, then I got that a little dark right there. I don't like it. So let's let's just lighten this right here again. Let's try you. So you've got some leeway in painting this, right? Well, yeah, you're just in a different section of the board, but it doesn't look like yours. Yeah, so you've got, this is where you can be a little creative, but um, that's a little bright right there, so I don't like that. Where? Right in here. Oh. But I don't well, you got to remember where your birds are going to be plopped, too. Yeah, maybe I've got some birds here, too, but I feel like I've got enough of a background now to get this. I feel like this is a very kind of tropical beach board now. Let's see, let's put a little white with that. Okay. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty. Oh, yeah, that's it. We just needed some more colors on this. You know, I didn't think the board could get any better. But it looks better now, doesn't it? It does. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the board. So you're you're so relieved because it's it's like watching grass grow, I suppose. But um, oh, I don't know. <sighs> I know it's just it's it's a it's it's a challenge. So we'll just dry this and we're gonna put our birds on. Okay. All right, so I'm going to just um, outline these, and I'm using a pen so I'll know where I've been. But I'm pushing pretty hard. If you were doing this on a board, it would transfer easier. Here's the... photo of our flamingos. I love their necks. Don't you guys love their necks? It's such an interesting bird. And then we have with our, our we do this for a while and these these are ridiculous pens they give out. Okay. 
paint for a while and then they they don't pen anymore. It's interesting if they doesn't this doesn't curve. You see how it goes straight down and then like an arrow down here at the bottom. Look at the shape of these. Uh, and then you know here's the head. Looks like the beaks were just added on. It's an afterthought. Yeah, they're very fun. You know, when they were designed, they go, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Again, these are your Caribbean flamingos. I didn't realize there were different flamingos. Oh, it's going to look great. Yes, yeah, so if it's coming out. I think I can take a pencil and just uh, fill in the rest, but... You're going to have to finish off the tushy on that one. Yeah, no, I'll just draw him in. That's not how I know he goes. All right, so there's our less than perfect transfer of the birdies. So let's just finish that. while we can. Okay, just broke that. All right, so there's our birds, and we're going to have some palm trees coming up here. Is that like EA? About like so. And I'm going to have another one coming this way, up like that. And just think of umbrella fronds when you're doing this. Like if you took an umbrella apart, and all you have is little metal pieces that hold it together. Think and then have some a little longer. Okay, so that's the that's the. Those are going to be our um, palm trees, and we're going to have the fronds going off the canvas like that. All right. So way cool, yes. So now we just need a little brush. Nothing too big, just something small. What brush do I want? A quarter inch or your three eighths? Yeah, I'm gonna just take a little round one right now. Ooh, really and I've got some really fun colors here today. I've got all the Holbein um, <laughs> the luminous, luminous colors. colors. I just thought these would be fun, orange and pink, and you know we've got some stuff here, guys. But in the meantime, I'm just gonna take some uh, cad orange and. Uh, Put the head in of this guy. And let's take a little bit of the red here. He's a little darker here. Let's make him a little darker on this side. And then as he goes back, take some white and and magenta, say his back, back feathers, going to be lighter here, and the more in the pinks, bring it down to his tail like that. And let's get a little bit more white with that. We've got sort of an underpainting here of the uh, him, the, the orange will be on top of this, but this is sort of the lighter color here, this light pink. Let me just sort of blend this all in. It's a soft brush. Okay, like that. And uh, as I come down here, it's a little bit of cad red medium. I want this to be a little darker right here right under here because you've got all of this in here is going to be pink bird so let's just fill that in here like that 
take a little bit of our reds and say it's a little bit darker toward the neck of the other bird. It's a little bit darker in here like that. Okay, so these are just sort of our, what I would call our foundation colors. Kind of a blocking in. Yeah, then we want to connect the neck here like that. So the beak will come over it. So I started putting them in there like so. Here's a little magenta. We know we want something a little bit darker back here. May have to wait till it dries, but there we go. So we're keeping this pretty loose. I think I can use that on this one. These same back colors here. Maybe a little red back in here. Some orange. There you go. Now this little bird, we're going to take some cad yellow medium and put it up on his head. I'm going to rinse this brush. Does get one bird to show up? He's going to have to be lighter than the other one. Does that make sense? So like right up on here, the top of his head is going to be more yellow in his neck like that. We'll make that yellow first. Could paint it white, but I think we're we'll going to be okay with the yellow. And uh, let's take a little white with that. I yeah, maybe a little white. Yeah, let's add a little white to that yellow. This cad yellow medium. And uh, we know this is going to be lighter coming back this way. We're going to put orange over this eventually. But um, the, the thinking behind this now is that you, we want this to, to dry. And um, and then we'll paint the orange on top, and it'll still be lighter. So we're going to say that you've got a lot of this yellow in here like that coming in the back like there. And this It's already tropical, don't you? Aren't you feeling the tropics on here? I really am with the colors we've got already in that great background board. Yeah, the board made a difference, didn't it? Just taking a little time with that board. And... You know, we've got such beautiful bird, um, we've got some great bird tutorials. Of course, you guys remember the bird hop I did with my daughter, Cinnamon. And um, That was some fun birds in there. Yeah, yeah. so uh, let me just, I'm into white here. I want to do his head here, his beak. Of course, this bottom part is black, but we're going to do the white part of it, their beaks, as long as we've got the white out. We still can see the lines. How about you? But sometimes I lose those lines, and then I don't have them anymore to fill in. I have to kind of guess where everything went. So let's see. Let's put a little of this white in here like that. Show you so many different ways to paint things. I mean, kind of, and really the colors. You know, when you're sitting there saying, if you're, if you're living in, say, New York City or up in Boston or Philadelphia or someplace, and you wanted to show in an art art gallery, chances are people aren't going to be decorating with flamingos, because people have a tendency to decorate to the climate that they're in. A lot of people don't realize that, but it's true. And um. I think people should decorate for the climate they'd like to be in. Well, that's one way to do it. I mean, I've got one room that's all decorated to fish stuff, you know, and it's all very tropical. But, um, you know, then again, I'm pretty close to Houston, you know, to the waterfront, too. So. Okay, so there's that. So I'm letting those dry. Um, we could take some, um, let's take some just burnt umber, maybe in a little cat, a little orange with it. And let's come on up here like this and say, here's our, here's our, our palm tree. I'm just using this soft brush. This is one that was in your Salvador kit. 
And then just kind of, kind of, just pushing it like a foot, like walking it up. See how I'm walking? And kind by, of like a flamingo walking up the. Uh... Yeah, and I get, and by doing that, I get a, um, I get a little bit of a, um, of a, the bark is a little bit not so smooth. It's a little bit uneven just by doing this, sort of walking it up the. I don't think we've ever showed you the walking up trick with a brush, but we're just walking it up. Walking up the tree. And it gets a little thinner as it comes back up here like that. It's a little bit fatter at the bottom. Run those off. Okay. So, um, that's fair. Now, at this point, you know, because remember, we want to make it look like an old board. We could maybe even put some could walk up some white on it. Kind of age these little trees a little bit, right? I don't know if I want them to go all the way down to the bottom. Maybe I'll just erase them here. I'm thinking about it, you know? Maybe I'll just erase that one. There it is. Yeah, this one will be a little longer. There you go. Let's just do that. Let's make them a little bit uneven. Here, it will just stop your little walkabout right about here. Okay? Okay. So now, I'm going to switch brushes. And I want an well, angle brush like this, because I want to go ahead and do the palm trees. So you want, like, you can take a thalo green, a little ultramarine blue. And you want to come, you know, using, just keep your brush flat dark green and you want to come out like this and uh, kind of do the fronds on this okay we're going to say one came like that all right can just do that for now sometimes you can just Avoid having to dry things by just a little bit more green with this. Let's just make some of these not so curvy. All right, so I'm going to say that's my that's my start on those. Okay, so if you think about them overlapping, okay, so you've got a palm frond is there and there's the one above it so that their frond leaf thingies are overlapping the other one so you kind of want to start at the bottom of these and start with like a little bit of phthalo green or something like that and just um, kind of mix a bunch of colors on your brush at once there you go I'm just going to come down here like that and twist the brush and uh, let's see it just Flatten it out. I want something a little darker here on some of this. There we go. Now, we've talked about this before, but we, we're going to start with the darker colors first. I'm going to get out my chalkboard for a minute and show you something. This is, uh, okay, I'm just going to come up here like this. Erase that. All right, now, here's what you're not doing. It is not a comb. I see more paintings ruined with palm fronds that look like that. <laughs> You've got to think of it. That you put your stem in, and they have to come off the stem, and they curve like bangs. On a face like hair, to curve like that, to curve. Now there's a hundred different kinds of palm trees, but still, this is sort of your basic ones. And then you may have, for instance, um, you may have some lighter ones over it. And maybe they're kind of two colors, but you're going to start with that. Okay. Yes. So that's how you're going to do it, and some of them may even come up like that. Okay, depending, and if you have a palm tree coming up like that, maybe this is coming up this way. See what I'm doing? 
draw them out with a pencil in your mind on a piece of paper like I just did. Try to get it in your mind. Oh, those are pretty, aren't they? Yeah. The blue and pink. What a good looking. Oh, I wonder if we should have done them blue and pink. <laughs> I think we should have done them blue and pink. Hey, you'll be happy to know there are over 2,600 palm tree varieties. Oh, my gosh. Well, gosh. So that's... if yours don't look exactly like this, you have a different variety. Well, I always thought that that was a fair thing to say, right? Well, and, you know, I just wanted to confirm it for you, my queen. Thank you. So here's a little bit lighter one here like that over the top of that. Okay. So now let's get another, uh, let's get another one. See, I'm just, see how I'm pulling these around and maybe this one's overlapping that one. Yes and yes. You want some you want the darker ones underneath and the lighter highlight on top so here we go uh, this one i've lost the edge on this brush it's worn out so i'm not getting quite the edge i want so let me get a different one uh, sometimes that happens i've lost the edge on that one Oh, gosh. Let's try a new one. Well, brushes wear out, you guys. Here we go. Let's try this one. That's better. Yes and yes. Remember, you can do it up when it's going up in the air like that. It might just all just be doing this, yeah. And uh, let's start. Let's start with the darker colors. And this is how you paint it in. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Meantime, those can be drying. Creating a three-dimensional effect there by putting the palms in front of the, the trunk. Yeah, that's yeah, just Creating having some. Well, but you have to start where your line was originally, and then go over it. So where this is, you have to start from the top of that line and go over it all right so um you can have a damp brush for this Remember, I'm just using the last four bits of this brush. Using the toe. Just the toe, okay. So while that's drying, let's just go back to our flamingo then and keep painting her, hims, them. Keep painting them. So, all right, so what do we know for sure? Well, we know for sure that um, this cad red medium, right, right here, we need a darker, we need a darker orange up here on the top of her head. This is like one of these things that requires a couple of layers of paint. And I want a little magenta here. I want it darker next to this guy right here. And um, we can do a little bit darker on the head right here. This is our darkest part, and then we've got something dark back in here like that, okay? Then I've got some bright orange on the top of his head. Cad, cad orange, kind of a light one. I'm just playing with some of the brighter colors here, but I want a brighter orange here. But remember, you're going to do this. You've got to bring it around like that. And then I want a little, let's take a little bit of yellow and orange and just do say, here's just something a little lighter right here on his chest. See, we're doing that. Okay. And then he's got, this is coming under here like that. There we go. 
So, you know, you want to kind of go back and forth. There we go like this. That's it. Now, um, this orange here, this brighter orange here, this an orange, kind of an orange here on this part of the bird. And then the rest of that bird's wing is kind of pink. So let's put the uh, kind of, let's do a pink feather like that for the wings. Come this way with it. This is kind of the underpainting for this. I like that color. Add some light to that. This suggests some lighter. This is a sign. We're not trying to do, you know, to anything much. It's kind of like a sign. So we're sort of advertising these birds or like that, right? So this is right, we're doing that. Okay. So um I want a little more orange on top of this one. And I think I want some orange and red. Like that. It's going to say right next to here, I want this. Okay, so there's, that's part of this bird right now. I'm going to take a little bit of white. Just a bit more white showing. There we go. Okay, so that's very arty, don't you think, you guys? All right, so now let's take this little bird. Let's get into some oranges here. This little head here is... Let's see. Cad red, light, I think is this color. Gonna have a little bit of red right here. This guy does too, a little orange here. So I need this to come this way. And for that to work, this other one has to be darker. So this magenta, I'm gonna put a little bit of blue with. Um, because this has to be very dark right here for that to show up. Let's, see, let's put something a little darker under here, too. Your lights and darks are what's going to make this stand out. Otherwise, you're going to lose the birds, So, and you, which you don't want to do. So you, you're going to have to play a little bit with the light and dark oranges and the pinks. So, for instance, we know that um, we want something light on top of his head. Here, coming back, yeah. And then on his tummy, like that. And let's pull some, uh, let's just get some lighter orange here, like that. Now, kind of work this in. I wiped all the paint off. Work that in. Maybe work a bit more yellow in and wipe the brush out and kind of put a little paint and then try to work that in. Maybe it needs a little white right up in here. Try to work that into the painting. Okay, now this brush will not blend like one of these stiffer brushes. So if I do one of these, like this is a cat's tongue, I can tap this in here like that and just get that effect that I want of the kind of the blended neck and head like that. I can kind of get that to happen right there. See? So you can see definitely see that this guy is higher than that. Now, I want to dry that for a second. Maybe uh, John could, um, do you have anything you can show people? Oh, I'm sure I'll come up with something. All right, I'm going to dry this for a second. Now, what I noticed from my reference photo is that it's darker under his head right here. Okay, it's very dark right there. Goes down to here. This is dark. And then right under his 
um, neck right here under the other bird. It's a kind of a light pink. Okay. So then that, see we've dried it. So now I've got the light pink. And I'm saying that there's some of these feathers that are coming around this way from that. And uh, let's do a little bit more of this light pink color right next to this, right like that. Okay, so in order for this to show up, we're going to have to have a little white here his little beak to show up okay and here's some of that right like that so there's this other one and let's let's just pull his feathers this way so that you it, you want to have everything kind of going this way and this is this luminous rose color which is marvelous you can't really get that color. anywhere you can't get that anywhere else Holbein's the only one that makes it you can't make it you can't come up with it you can get close yeah. We can't get that full richness. No, you just can't. So, you do a lot of stuff. Like for instance, here's the top of his head. Let's get some red here. And then I want to blend that back in here so that it just sort of smudges out. There we go. Just sort of tap that in there. Oh man, is that fun? Come on, you guys. Isn't that fun? Don't oh, you think this is fun? I'm just. I, I'm on my pins and needles. All right. So here's some, here's some orange feathers coming this way. And as they come down toward the. I still can't believe you covered up that gorgeous board. Oh no. <laughs> tell you what, since he's wider here at the neck, comes under here like this. It comes up like this. I'm just going to, you want it to be free. And uh, this darker back in here, this is more of the magenta colors in the back. And under his neck right here, it's dark. It starts kind of like that, and this gets dark right here, and then under this wing. So, you know, you're looking at this going, it, it just reminds me of like a birthday cake or something. I don't know what this re just reminds me of a cake or something. I might want to eat it. Just really reminds me of a cake. Reminds you of a cake? Yeah, somehow all these pink colors it just reminds me that I want to eat cake. I don't know. Just me and Mary I'm not Antoinette. quite sure I see the correlation between a flamingo and cake, but uh, uh -oh. you know. well, everyone does. Just <laughs> those of us that know stuff know that that's what it is. So we're just going to take a little of this. There we go. Look at that! Isn't that just so fun? It's just if you don't overwork it, just a few brush strokes, and there you have it. Flipped up. Uh, you know, your reds and stuff and your, um, you know, your darker colors. And here's the, just going into the wing here. And I know it's darker back here. And that's, we knew it was darker right here too. Mm, yep, yes and yes. So fun. So now I want to bring this one to changing brushes here again. I want to bring something very light over the top of this, almost a pink here, light pink. Some white paint here, just kind of roll it around here. A little more white in it. There we go. Let's just bring this up a little closer to this one. Now, here's where the fun comes in. 
well, I think you were having fun anyway, but you know, for me, it's just when you start d defining things, I'm going to take this brush here and we're going to say that there's some, some feathers coming up like this. This is where you have more than one color on the brush. And we're going to say a little darker under here on the bottom. Like so. And then the top part is this white. They're pretty looking feathers. Yeah, they they are. They they're just they're, they're just they very pretty soft. Very soft and, and and you know and I think you can that's a brush like this is how you achieve that. Yeah, this is a softer round brush. Comes with a Salvador kit. And that particular brush he's using. It's, yep. It's not one of the normal stiffer ones that you get from the Bristol online. Which I, which you'll see me use ninety nine percent of the time. Yeah. It's a stiffer one, but sometimes, in certain instances, a um, you need a softer touch. You need a, you absolutely do. And I know I want this bird a little bit darker back here, underneath here, like that. So one head is in front of another. And uh, the white paint, the tip. How fun. Okay, so now we've got, um, um, Good, good We've got to do birds. some, you know, some beaks and all that stuff. But I think we could come back now to our tree. We want it to feel more tropical, so let's put some white with this, kind of a tropical green color. Well, we want to say that this, similar to how we're doing the, Um, uh, the, the feathers, they're, they're similar brush strokes. Do you see that? It's almost the same. Got your shadow colors underneath. You want some, you want kind of brighter than others. Sometimes you want a little orange in the, the palm fronds. Kind of tie them in here. Now, Salvador's got a great light green color. I'll show it to you. It's got, this is a perfect one if you don't have this and you haven't got a Salvador kit yet. They're just so nice. This is a beautiful tropical green color. What do they call that one? Uh, this is the one that's called yellow green. Yeah. If you just didn't want to mix it, you're having trouble mixing a green. See how bright that is? It's a great green. See, and it does, I think it, it bodes well for a painting like this because we're talking about very tropical colors here. And uh, you can mix it with like yellow and stuff. And Get another variation? Yeah, get another variation of things like that. There you go. There's our. And I think maybe I just. Thalo green and white isn't bad either. But sometimes that's a trop. That can be a tropical green color too, because it's almost a turquoise. Remember, don't forget to. 
bring some over, some fronds over the others. Kind of overlap stuff. And let's go with, like I said, a second coat of um, this green here. Let's do something. Let's just put some yellow in here. Yellow and there we go. Something darker. If you haven't dried, um, a lot of times what will happen is that you'll, you'll find yourself drawing on the uh, canvas right like that see and you know you're uh, well mixing the colors on the canvas it's drying and then it's not drying so sometimes you're here we go and these are just Now, could you use a liner brush, too? You could use a lot of different things. I want to put a few coconuts in here in our palm trees. Maybe three here, up here like that. Just something. I think that's very tropical. Maybe I'll just put two over here. There's date palms, there's coconut palm trees, there's all these different ones, right? Over, 20, over 2,600 varieties. Well, that's what you said, John, and I, and I think that's so interesting. So I'm just going to bring, bring this a little bit wider right here. That's a lot of palm trees. That's a lot of palm trees. There we go. So now the last thing we want to do is put their kind of the details of the birds on. And we can do that with the, and this is dry enough, I could put a little of this pale, this luminous rose color, the pale peach, like this, just, just tiny little bits of color here. That's one of those kind of bright fluorescent colors. I'm going to use a couple of places on their heads. Brighten this up. This is a fluorescent orange. Oh, how fun is this? Doesn't get any funner. I mean, for me, it's it's really great. It's it's look really great. What you got? I mean, look at these colors, right? Just I mean, that's just, that's just color heaven, isn't it? Okay, so now I want to put their little legs on, which are, um, they were kind of a, what, kind of an orange color. All right, let's see. I think we said one went here. Probably want my other brush for that, the one that has a little stiffer. Yeah. Uh, Get a little sharper line with those legs. Mm -hmm. For the legs, I think I want maybe a little bit more brown in it. Really want to squeeze it tight. So that you've got the let's see this one came I think we just I'm gonna say that's a this one kind of came like this. There's that one.
Yeah, remember, if you get something too wide, like you want to, I got that a little wide there, you can erase it. Clean brush and just sneak up beside it like that. Then that leg out. Okay? You have the power to do that. Yes and yes? You have the power to be able to do it. Now, now I'm looking, as, as things dry, I think I want to put a few more fronds like this. Maybe some couple over the coconuts so they're not, they look like they're part of the tree. Here's some of the lightest color we're going to use. No. Okay, now let's see. I think I want something very light here where the tail goes next to the palm tree. There you go. That's it better. I have some white here somewhere. Where's my white? There, just a little. Sometimes you just have to add a little bit of color. All right, I'm going to dry this really well, and then we're going to put the faces on. We could get closing it up here, folks. A uh, black pasta, pasta pen. We could use black paint too. Here, I'll just show you. Here's some uh, carbon black, and I'm going to just that's a flow paint, and I'm going to uh, use that for their beaks. It really, there's a little ball inside there, and you want to shake it up. I'm just going to put it up here. A little drop of that, and I want a little tiny brush. These are these little model brushes and I'm just going to put it on the tip that comes in front of this like that comes around and this curves like he's smiling but it curves down like that and then there's a couple other little curves Okay, like that. Something on this side. Oh, here, this orange, like that. And then the, it doesn't come to a point, it's kind of rounded. His beak's so rounded so he doesn't stab himself or others. He's a total walking danger. Now, the um, eye is going to be uh, take some white paint. The eye is uh, right up here. Let's just do that light. Clean brush is a different one, right? We're going to do the eye right over here, too. We're going to do uh, something else with the eye, but we got to put them in like that. I forgot those. All right, so now back to this uh, beak. Then this one comes. Remember, I told you they bend back a little bit. They come this way, and then they kind of bend back, almost like an angle. What do they call that angle, John? That, that direction when the angle bends like that. Um, is that one of those obtuse angles? I don't know. It's some sort of angle that it's, it's doing. Uh, it's just a little angle. <laughs> That's not a 45-degree angle. In other words, it's, it's no. not quite a 45, but it's... An obtuse angle is any angle greater than 90 degrees, and that's exactly what it is. Ooh, who knew this stuff, huh? Well, you obviously did. Oh, obviously. Okay, so there's your little eyes on the these guys. Oh, now they're really coming alive. Well, for flamingos, they don't really come alive until you 
put in the uh, and you put in the beaks. Because that's that's what they you know just absolutely absolutely have to have that. Here's some let's see, I'm gonna rinse this off again. I need to come up a little higher on the on his head here with this bit of white up here on the top of his beak up there like that. So sometimes just going over the white a bit, um, this beak kind of curves like that on the top, like a Roman nose, uh, has that look to it. And then he's got the top of this is a little bit wider right here on the top of his head. And then this one's got a little bit of an orange something right there. A little more orange right around his eye here. And don't you just love the way they show up? I just love, there you go, here's a little, almost not quite a white outline, but close. I just round that head off a bit more like that. And there you've got that. Now, um, let me just bring some of this orange color right in here in front of his tummy here. We have the shadow next to his neck, which is good, right? And we want that, but we want to have the there we go. We want this to be lighter here. It's just an interesting balance of just the position of the lights and darks on his head so that one one bird shows up against another. And I think I think they do. Yeah, I think you've created enough separation. I think we have too. A little bit yellower right there, and then a little bit yellower right here. There's some beautiful yellows in the uh, Holbein. Um, uh, not Hol well, well, Holbein too, but in the Salvador kit, they've got some great yellows. So if you're looking for, you know, a great one, that's a. They've got some really nice combination of yellows. Now we just, I think I'm going to do a little bit of pink on the leg, pink purple on the legs maybe. Is there anything else that we feel like we should do just because we could do it? There we go. I think that is just so fun. You can't beat these little brushes. Just, I swear, these are just perfect for this. All right, so here we have, now, some people might want to write something on the sign. I don't, you know, at this point, maybe make it a sign where you write something on it. I'm going to do a little bit of highlight on my coat and my coconuts here. Maybe it's just. But um, I, I don't think I want to do anything else but uh, show that. And I'll tell you what, there's a, such a difference between, say, a painting like this. And we, we need to talk about this because I'm going to show you a couple, one more thing I want you to just kind of be aware of. And before I do that, let me just. Well, it's dark here like that. Um, is that when you, for instance, next week in our Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting, let me just show you this real quick. We've got a, um, 
we've got a painting that's uh, you know it's, it's great for a kitchen, the tutorial, and you'll see it's it's in the dark tones, and even though the carrots are as bright as our flamingo, right? But again, this is more of a subdued type of art. It's so important to think about where you live when you, you know, sometimes you just want to paint a painting for the fun of it, and that's great. But we have an awful lot of you that follow us because you're trying, you'd like to just supplement your income a little bit with, with art and maybe sell it a little. And one of the things you've got to consider, who's your audience, where they live, where are they buying it? Um, again, I wanted, thought you'd like to see that. I love these carrots and still like we have so many of these food videos um, in our Academy of Fine Art and Acrylic Painting. Acry acrylic Painting with GingerCook.com is how you find us there. That's our new release. But I want to just, again, come back to this. And um, I'm going to give you, show you a frame on this and let you see how, how tight this is and um, when, you're, when you're painting something. Now, again, you want to let stuff dry to see how it, you know, like, for instance, I've let a few things dry right here, and I see where I might want to um, lighten something up in between here like this, right? So, you know, wherever there's a light, there's a dark, so I might want to lighten up something like that. See what I mean? But keep in mind... that um, the size brush you use, the uh, how much water you put on, on on your brush, whether you're you know dry brushing something or whether you're um, uh, like we did with the wood or whether you're using a little tiny brush like this, whether you're reshaping a brush and putting it to a point, whether you have to say, you know what, this brush has worn out, it's not me, it's the brush. I'm not gonna you know paint that anymore. Um, John, I'm going to show them a, do you have a uh, frame I might show people? Well, let's see. Just want to bring this back here a little bit more than I had it. Oh, that, that tropical blue would look gorgeous in there. Uh, There, just brighten that up a bit, right like that. I think we have some a really pretty blue frame that would look great with this kind of an old barn wood frame. That blue, do we have one like that? Hmm. Okay. Really? Oh yeah, one like this. Yeah, yeah look how nice that looks. This, and I even like this blue one better. Look at that. Yeah, you can see it. These are these all. These are sold by Jerry's. And um, I like the tr I like these tropical kind of you know wood frames for this. These are a little small for oh, the yeah, painting. Eight by tens. So these are eight by tens, but you get the idea of how nice this oh, would yeah, look. Those look good. See, I mean, even this green one is really pretty. Sort of this pale, sort of you know. I mean, this this says beach, doesn't it? Kind of faded beach. Yeah. And you know, again, you can see how this is. Um, now this frame, if you were going to do it, and it's interesting. It was. It was a, a dark wood, and they put this dry brush, this light green over the top of it. Okay, it looks like I got something on it, but doesn't matter. There, so that those are just kind of what letting you see what you could do with your paintings. Um, so uh, uh, someone's going to say, where's the other leg for this? Sometimes they're tucked up under here, so we're just doing the one leg. But uh, we could do another leg. Do you think we should do another leg? Nope. Maybe. I don't. Well, the leg comes right down where the um where the where the board is. Now this is interesting where the crack of the board is. I thought you did that on purpose. Well, you know, I I think, but one thing I did see about the legs, and this is why these things take a while. So I saw about the legs is what they had done. If you look at their legs, they've got um, 
They do like a little fluffy thing here. That's too much water on the brush. It's been sitting in there. You see me do that all the time. Redo the... They've got a little fluffy thing on the leg. Well, I'll just give the legs just a little. Do, do, do we like that or should I have left it alone? I'm trying to see if I like, even like that. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It'll yeah. dry down a little bit. There we go. Here's our palm tree, kind of age our palm tree a little bit. Oh, this is fun, John. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I just, I look at this and going, okay, where, where are you? One of those paintings you can paint on for weeks. Well, you know, I just see a few. I just want a few color highlights here because it's tropical. You know what I mean? I just wanted to brighten that up a little bit. It's tropical. I want it to, I want it to feel like, um, uh, I want it to feel a little bit more like the um, tropics. And if you add a few little, like a few little colors like this, a couple of bits of orange here and there. Which I had and kind of lost. There you go. See, see what a difference that made just doing that. And what else did I see in something I saw that was kind of pretty? What do you think of this? Putting a little blue by the the palm tree. Did you think so or not? Well, it I'll has just, to make sense. What, what kind of blue are you putting in there? Well, maybe where the. Yeah, no. I think we're going to sign it here. <laughs> you guys want to experiment around, try something different. I say go for it. I want to just sign this here while um, the signing is good. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us when we do premieres. Um, we'll be um, varying premieres throughout the year between our live shows and our premieres because it, sometimes it gives John and I a little more time to get other things done. And, of course, your comments are so appreciated. We read, we read them all. And a lot of times on our live shows, we do uh, drawings. We're not doing any drawings today. Uh, for, for, you know, for the premieres, we won't do any drawings, but um, speaking of that, um, keep in mind we've got an auction coming up in July on our website, and as far as drawings go, uh, the traceables are, uh, for this are going to be avail are available on our website, Acrylic Painting with Ginger Cook, too. Also, so you want might want to know about that. That's Acrylic Painting with Ginger Cook dot com. That's yep. for orange I'm managers just above. Sign this while the sign is good. Thank you, guys. What's hey, if you haven't subscribed, take two seconds to press that subscribe button. Hit that little bell icon so you know when we have something new. Yeah, I, I say. Let's, yeah, Try to get us to 100,000 before the end of the year. We'd greatly appreciate it. Yeah, um, where's our... Here, I'm going to do another small pasta pen here and sign this. I really think this was fun, don't you, John? I think it was great. I, think this was a, I th hope you guys thought this was a fun one to do, too. And um, let me see where's that. There we go. I'm gonna sign right across the boards like that. These old boards. All right. So, what would I guess one question we could ask people: What would be your favorite thing to um, want to paint? You know, what would you like to see? We've done so many different things. We're running out of ideas. So ha, you got something you want to paint. I know you tell us, but sometimes we've fulfilled a lot of those we requests we have filled. Have we not, John? Absolutely. So then what would be next? Oh, nice color. I like that, don't you? Just... Well, it kind of goes with the theme. Yeah, doesn't it? There you go. Ha. All right. This was fun. I hope you had a good time. And, um, We'll, we'll see you next week for a, another premiere and, uh, and chat alongside John and I, and we'll have some conversations, and I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks to our mods for hanging out with us, even when we're doing premieres. Thanks, guys, and bye. Bye. Ginger Cook, the queen of color.
with a blazing brush at the speed of light. And a blank canvas. And a hearty yes and yes. The queen of color, Ginger Cook, and her sidekick, John Little, teach you to paint with acrylics.